Yes, yes. Well, we're going to be talking more about that in a moment. And I said we're going to tell you why you don't have to be afraid of what's happening in the world. We'll talk very much about the peace that God can give when you turn to Him. All right, friends, we're going to also be talking about reclaiming and restoring biblical Christianity, our offer of the week. Take a look at the preview. America's greatest need is the reclaiming and restoring of biblical Christianity. Why? Presently, many ministers are attempting to eliminate the old-time religion. Doctrinal sermons have been replaced by self-esteem, psychobabble nonsense. Worse yet, contemporary services have turned the sanctuary and worship service into a circus sideshow featuring rock bands and oftentimes songs with meaningless lyrics. Let's restore the preaching of God's Word, the old hymns, the Ten Commandments, and God's demands for holy living. Let's turn away from practicing Hollywood's barnyard morals, covering every form of promiscuous sexual behavior. One prominent American minister presents the following rules to ministers for building a mega church and pleasing the ungodly. Don't mention sin. Remodel the sanctuary to look like a nightclub or casino. Remove every cross inside and outside of the building. Don't give invitations to receive Christ. Who are America's and Christianity's false prophets? Why are they so popular and embraced? Order the new video, Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity, and find out. Oh, friends, do not put off making the call. There is the number or the address. We're going to be sending you with your order a beautiful cross to wear and also this great pamphlet. It helps to explain some of the things on here. All your questions, reclaiming biblical Christianity. We need it, Jack. And I'll tell you, you got an hour and 45 minutes, five of the regular type programs, loaded with information. Took me years to learn many of these things. And this cross is to stand against this man we're going to expose here in a moment who's trying to get rid of the cross. All right, the cross is so very, very important. There's the number. Make the call right now. Friends, you know, as we've witnessed some of the destruction that's been happening with tornadoes and floods and all the rest, I can't help but compare what we're talking about today, the destruction of a biblical church. The destruction, there is a subtle compromise in our churches today. It's so subtle. And Bill Mullenberg says it so very, very well. And there he is, of course. I'd like you to see what he has to say. A religion or same old apostasy? Chrislam. Now, don't forget that word, Chrislam. It's a term that may be used more often among apostate churches. Such syncretism of Christianity and Islam has its roots in the common word conferences that started a few years ago with Islamic and evangelical leaders sought to find a way to identify the common beliefs the two religions supposedly share. A decision made at the Common Word Conference was to set aside one week a year to promote the validity of each other's religion. Now, Presbyterians, Lutherans, and a host of other mainline churches are observing such gatherings. Can you believe what he just wrote about? Now, you know, Jack, he went on with something else that I think maybe you would like to read for us right now, if you will, and I'll put that on the screen, but very, very important. This is documented, ladies and gentlemen. This past fall, several Christian churches around the country held joint services with Muslims in an attempt to solidify the perceived similarities of both religions. One Presbyterian church described how they had placed the Bible and the Quran side by side in their pew wrecks. Other evangelical leaders promoting such gatherings include Robert H. Schuller and Rick Warren. Schuller was a speaker for the Common Word Conference while Warren spoke at an Islamic event in Washington, D.C. last year. Wherever Chrislam or its equivalent are promoted, Christians should run for their spiritual lives, and I'm really going to spend time on both of these men for the entire program next week. All right, let's take a look. Of course, we all know who Robert H. Schuler is. Now, this is the father, not the son, 
but the Father. And we all know Rick Warren. He's written a couple of books. We're going to talk about that. And here he is, Warren Keeps Faith at Islamic Conference. Now, he spoke at their Society of North America, and the presence of one of the USA's most prominent religious leaders was a huge boost to U.S. Muslims. Now, let me just say, can we really put them together? Can we really put them together? How about it, Jack? Rexella, next week I'm going to deal with Rick Warren's 24 points on how to build a purpose-driven church. Ten of them are so against the Word of God that he's probably destroying a couple thousand verses of God's Holy Word, and I will not let it go by. I've got to be true to God. Yea, let God be true in every man a liar, Romans 3, 4. And if I please men, I would not be the servant of God, Galatians 1, 10. And I'm going to be true to God. Now listen, here's why we can't work together, and I promised God I would do this a number of times this year, because Christians in America and the world do not know who the prophet Jesus of Islam is. And they all say the same thing. Oh, we love Jesus like you. He's our prophet. Wait a minute. The first thing they teach is that when Jesus returns with Mahdi, the Messiah of Ahmadinejad of Iran, who says he's got to kill the Jews for his Mahdi will come, well, Jesus comes back with him as his chief lieutenant. And Christ says to the world, I've become a Muslim since I left. I faked it. I was not God or a deity. I did not die on a cross. He said, in fact, I want you to know I'm so ashamed of what I taught about the cross that I've come back to crush and smash every cross in existence. And he said, furthermore, I will be the chief executioner of all Jews and Christians who will not become Muslims. And if you don't believe that is true, then there's Sheikh Kabani, who is the founder and chairman of the Islamic American Council, who said, that is what we plan, that this Christ, our prophet, Jesus, will put to death the Jews and the Christians who won't convert. How can you work two religions like that together? And I'm going to warn the world over and over, because that's what they teach. And it's about time we knew, and about time we got out of those racks at the church, the book of Theirs and ours combined. It's wrong. Why? Because my Bible says so plainly, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ, which you've received, and avoid them. You get what God has to say? Second John 1, verses 9 to 11, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not the doctrine of Christ hath not the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto and bring not this doctrine of Christ, don't even let him into your house alone into your church service. Obey God. Rexella, read one of his points. We're going through all of them. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the whole program will be about Schuler and Rick Warren because we're standing for this book. Yes, so you know, I have several things he, right here uh, that, of course, Rick Warren wrote about that we should do if we want to become a mega church, we want to be big. But one of the things that hurts my heart so much is this one. Crosses and other traditional Christian symbols may be moved, removed from both the inside and outside of the church. That hurts my heart. That's what my faith is all about. My Savior dying for me. He's not a prosecutor or a murderer. He's the Savior. He's your Savior, right? 40,000 or more ministers are following this man. Are they so blind they can't see? It's wrong to remove the cross of Jesus out of the church or in front of it. Thank God for the shrine of the flower over here, the great Catholic church where Jesus has been there for maybe all, almost a hundred years, thank God. But these Protestants, some of them, let's destroy the cross. Now what's behind it? Muhammad hated the cross. And he smashed everyone he could find. So now that Jesus is a Muslim, he sends Christ to smash all these crosses. And I told you, it's heresy. Our Jesus is not in that crowd. Now listen to me. He made peace, Jesus did, through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20.
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Why? That we might be in heaven. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.18. Obama goes over to a great Catholic university, and as Bishop Sheen said, we will have some in our church who will have a Christ with a cross, and Obama's crowd said, cover the cross before Obama will speak. I wonder if he got that from Rick Warren. A lot of preachers are doing it. Let me quickly say one more thing. Paul could say in Galatians 6, 14, Ah, God forbid that I should glory in anything but the cross of Jesus, even though verse 12 says there'll be persecution for the cross. God forgive you, Rick Warren. And let's really find out other things he's teaching. Hundreds of verses being violated in this precious book. Next week. Oh, yes. Jesus died on the cross that we might have eternal life. The Son of God came for you. He came for me. The cross is real. He's the Savior of the world. Never compromise that. He wants to be your Savior. He wants to save you from whatever mess you're in. He wants to give you eternal life. Jack, will you show our people how to be saved? Open their hearts to the Lord and accept Him as Savior. Oh, precious Jesus, we're sorry the way they're defaming you and taking away the cross on which you died to save us. Lord Jesus, I know that what you did on the cross is you shed that blood and all your suffering and agony and heartache was to take my sin away from me and you bore it in my place. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for your love. And today I receive it and receive you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. Save me forever. I pray in your holy, beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Ooh, doesn't that feel good to know you've been forgiven of everything in your life you don't want there? Write to me. I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. God bless you. And now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our offer of the week. Chuck? My friend, to order your copy of Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity on DVD or VHS, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Epe Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Epe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. And now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And let me just encourage you, please, there is the 800 number and there is the address. It is important that you understand exactly what biblical Christianity is. And Jack explains it so well. Hey, this will be with it too, the wonderful little cross. And now I just want to say that we do have an answer to our problems and our troubles, don't we, when we turn to the Lord? When trouble is deep-seated and long-standing, try kneeling. How very good. Trust the Lord. We're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.